The shawl collar is a popular one and fun to make. There are different types of shawl collars, but basically it's one in which the upper collar and the facing are cut as one piece and then seamed at the center back. On this one, the under collar is cut as part of the blouse front and it also is stitched together at the back of the collar. It is not difficult to make. Just like any other construction, you'll find it easy if you follow the instructions step by step. However, there's one particular point I'd like to call your attention to. Right here where the collar section joins the shoulder seam. Be sure, be doubly sure, that you have marked this corner accurately. And then that you have reinforced that corner with a row of small stitches. These units have all been completed except for those things that have direct bearing on the collar. And you'll notice that this dart has been stitched and pressed to the center without trimming it off. And that is cotton construction. If your pattern instructions should suggest that you trim this dart off and press it open, that's for garments made of heavier fabric. They'll be dry cleaned. This other dart does play a part in shaping the collar. So I've left one to make now. And here's how it will look when it's finished. My pattern tells me to crease along this line. And then I'll need to turn to my direction sheet to find out how to stitch it. And it tells me to stitch it an eighth of an inch from the fold line at this point and taper to nothing at either end. Then we'll tie and clip these threads. And press the dart over the curve of the tailor's hand. Press the dart toward the front and shape and press it from both ends. and then press from the right side. Now we're ready to join the back and the front. This will be our collar section and this is the shoulder seam. We'll match right sides and join the shoulder seams. And in order for you to see more clearly where we start pinning, watch this illustration. Here we have the back and here is a front section. On the back we have stay stitching. So instead of putting our pin down on the intersection, we'll put it in just inside the intersection, which will be our seam line. On the front, the stitching is on the seam line, so we'll bring our pin through right on the corner. 
Now we'll do the same on our garment. Put the pin just inside the intersection here on the back. Put it right through the corner of our stitching on the front. Match notches. And then match these outer edges. And the back side of your shoulder seam is usually a little fuller than the front. We take care of that extra fullness by lifting our stay stitching about every half inch. And in order to secure this important corner, we'll start stitching about a fourth of the way from the corner. Putting my needle down one fourth inch from the corner, then I'm going to stitch up to the corner, not one stitch farther, or stop one stitch short of the corner, and then I'll stitch on down the seam. Fasten the end by back stitching. At this point, I'd like to hurry things along so that I can show you every one of the steps in making a shawl collar in this demonstration. I'll show you all the steps, but I won't take time to show you every one of them all the way through. So while you watch, let me tell you. After you've joined the second shoulder seam, take these two sections that will form the collar and join them. Match the notches at the center back and pin. And be sure your seam gauge is set for the width called for in the pattern. Have the edge of the fabric against the guide as you sew. Press the seam open. The next step is to make the collar fit the neckline. First of all, clip down to the stitching line at the corner. This clipping has to go all the way down into the corner or it won't fit smoothly. Then clip the back neck edge down to a stay stitching line in a few places. Bring the seam lines together, match the center back, the notches, and the rest of the seams. We want to reinforce this important corner, so start about a quarter of an inch away from the corner. Back stitch to the corner, then finish stitching the seam. Back stitching at the end. Trim the seam off. And press it up into the collar section. At this point, you're ready to join the facings. Here's a method of joining the facing and interfacing when both are lightweight fabrics. On the facing, solid color in this case, reinforce the same important corner. The inner facing goes on the right side of the facing as shown on this print material. Stitch across the shoulder and down the outside edge. Then trim the seams as close as the weave of your fabric will permit. You won't need to layer because both of your fabrics are lightweight. Press across the seam to get the seam out on the edge. Turn right side out and press the inner facing so it will not show. Join the two facings at the notched ends and stitch. Trim off the inner facings down to the stitching and press the seam open. Put the right side of the facing on the right side of the garment, matching center back and notches along the edge. I like to pin baste but if you prefer thread basting, don't think that that is wrong. In stitching, start at the center back and stitch down on each side. Then trim the inner facing down to the stitching and trim off the seams. The steps I've just shown you have been completed on this blouse and that last long seam has been pressed. 
for one more step to close the neckline. Trim about one fourth inch off the seam from along this edge. And then trim the interfacing off down to the stitching line. Press the seam up. And then bring that creased edge up and over the neck seam line. And this seam can be either stitched on the machine or put down by hand. And here's your shell collar. 